Are you jacked into Buffy's Angels? We're actually trying this again. We recorded like maybe a quarter of an episode yesterday, and I hated it, and I didn't want to put it out. And that was uh, that was that, you know. So we're gonna try to be a little bit better today. Um, I'm uh, your host, Daniel Ehrenberg. I've seen these all a bunch of times. Uh, this is uh, what are we covering today? Season five, episode six of Buffy, which is family. Big Terror episode written and directed by Joss Whedon. And, and we've got uh, season two, episode six of Angel, which is Guys Will Be Guys. Big Wesley comedy classic. Um, let's bring in my co host watching for the first time. He'll be reading his notes at you. Here's Logan be a dare. Yup. Word for word, baby. Yep. Starting with Miss Kitty Fantastico. And we're not letting up from there. All right, great. Um, all right. So, uh, it, this sucks. It's November 7th, 2000. That's the night these aired. Okay. One of the biggest nights in American history, probably the beginning of the end for us. It was election night, 2000. Oh, wow. Election night. Yeah. You knew that because we talked about it yesterday, uh -oh. but you, you might be learning this for the first time because you know, you're actually listening to me this time. Um, I don't know so, if we're gonna make it a whole episode. I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about this. Um. Okay. So, you know who the the presidential nominees were in two thousand? Uh, I'm gonna guess George W. Bush and somebody else. Yeah, I told you yesterday. Oh yeah, but I'm letting you reveal again to the audience. No, no, no. Who was it? I want to see if you remember. Albert Gore. Okay, very good. All right, it was Bush v. Gore, okay? And uh, it was the night of hanging chads. We were all waiting up to find out. Can I tell the audience what that means, hanging chads? That's something I learned you yesterday. You remember that? Yeah, what is it? That's when guy Chad hangs upside down on the monkey bars. Absolutely not. Right, was that a joke? I did explain what it was yeah, yesterday. That was a joke. Do you remember? It's when the ballots are the fucking old people don't know how to punch through the ballots all the way. So we got them little hanging chads. Baby. Very good. Okay. That was the big uh, Halloween costume the next year. Okay. Of course, election night was seven days after Halloween. The next year, everyone was dressed up as a hanging chad, Logan. How did that happen? They'd be like a little ballot in like a piece of cardboard right and then they'd have a little piece hanging off that's what they were hanging jet i gotta look this up sounds pretty yeah. inventive <laughs> um so uh what ended up happening was gore probably won the election but since uh bush wouldn't concede for like a month and and they were like pushing for recounts eventually gore just like wanted the country to get up and running again so he backed out it's basically like the opposite of what Trump did, you know, like like Gore could have won. He wanted the country to be working. So he dropped out of the race. Uh, Trump uh, knew he didn't win and didn't give a shit about the country working. So he challenged the race. Yeah. And ruined us all psychologically forever. Yeah, pretty much, you know, like uh, I, I fully expect uh, democracy to end with the next Republican administration. That'll never happen, right? What do you mean? We're all going Democrat from now on. No, 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 no. Trump's winning the next election. You actually think that? Yeah. Is it him versus Biden again? Yes. Yeah. Honestly, Biden's going to die at some point, right? I hope so. But if he has a good VP, might as well just vote Biden and then hope he dies. Does he have a good VP? I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be her again, is it? Of course it would. What do you? Uh, what are you talking? You, when has a president ever switched VPs between I don't terms? Fucking no, I don't know when that happened. Never know. once fucking happened. No, I would do it. Whenever <laughs> I'm president, I'll swap them out. I think you are president, and I'm pretty sure you're considering swapping out. So, uh, you know, get ready for your next co-host, gang. Um, all right. Uh, that's not all that was going on that night, though. It was it, also. Do you know what else happened election night 2000? Uh, something about Jonathan. <laughs> oh, that's just what you forgot. I was trying like to help you remember this momentous moment. Mo this, uh, that momentous moment. I hate saying that. This like huge moment in American history. And to help you with that, 
I thought I would relate it to Buffy. I thought that might help. So I said when we tried to record yesterday that HBO eventually made an Emmy award winning uh, TV movie called Recount, which was about the election confusion of 2000. And uh, Danny Strong, who played Jonathan, actually wrote that TV movie and won an Emmy for writing that TV movie. I thought that would matter at all. But um, yeah, and my brain was like, Oh, is there? I feel like I saw Danny Strong on a baseball card the other day, and and then and then Daniel was like, got really upset, and that that's what broke the podcast yesterday. That moment, right there. But so, what? How was Danny Strong? And did you watch well, this? What the fuck are you talking about? Explain what, how why your brain went to a baseball card that you apparently were looking at the other day. No, I not that wasn't the exact thing, but I just like I I don't know. My brain thought of a Danny Strong that I knew that not that Danny Strong. That's all. I don't know. I don't want to explain it again. Okay. Uh, you know what the number one song in America was? Nah, I have no idea. The night of the election, two thousand. The number one song in America was "With Arms Wide Open" by Creed. I think I played that last week as their outro. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, I think we talked about how Creed came out with an album. I think I just played that as one of my favorite songs of theirs. And... Oh wow. So now you, that song really moves you like you think about Scott Stapp's relationship to his son. I, I wonder what his relationship is like to that kid today. The kid he wrote with him. arms wide. That was all that song was about. It was about like his firstborn baby with arms wide open. It's all welcome to this place. I'll show I'll you. I'll show every, you. Every, I'll, I'll dad you. I'll exactly. You. That's what it was. Man. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. I thought it was about a uh, woman. I'll show you how to. Pl- I'll show you how I'm gonna please you. No, 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 no. I'll, I'll show you this world. Look, I, I just, I just looked up with arms wide open, and the cover of the single to that song is like a little baby hand holding an adult thumb. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So there you get it right there. That is so funny, man. But what about his son? What is Scott Stapp's son doing today? That's what the podcast should be about. What this podcast should be about? Yes. We should pivot to what the yes. fuck Scott's son? Yeah. What's his name? Do we know? Listen to this. This is going to blow your fucking brain apart. Okay. His name is Jagger Step. Yeah, that's amazing. Named after Mick Jagger. Oh, I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Logan. Yeah. Listen to this. I have a headline here from a metal website. From December 21st, 2023, a mere month ago. Okay? Yeah. The the title of this article is, Even Scott Stapp's son mocked Creed's with arms wide open, and it's literally about him. Why did he mock it? It's a great song. He's now 25 years old. Um, uh, Let's see. I'm going to... Okay. Oh, okay. He shared an old story about uh, his son driving in the car in the uh, two kids giggling in the backseat. I was like, what are you kids laughing at? They just kept laughing. Then I hear with arms wide open. And then my own son, who I wrote the song about, is making fun of me, mimicking my voice. (laughs) And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. So I I don't know. It's not that he mocked it. I I think Scott Stapp is just really sensitive. Yeah, he's heard it all his life, how silly his voice is, I think. Well, if your voice sounds like that, maybe so- sing a different way. I'm into it. Like, Scott Stapp was clearly just trying to sound like Eddie Vedder. That's what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, 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 yeah. N- That's not his natural voice. It no one sounds exactly like Eddie Vedder naturally. I like the effort, I gotta say. Oh, come on. I applaud the effort. <laughs> All right, Creed. Um, so does your mom. Am I right? It's true. I do listen to one Creed song sometimes. What's that one? It's called, like, One Last Breath or something. This is okay. real dumb, like, later Creed single that for some reason I find good. Okay, is there, isn't there, like, a, a pink song, One Last? Oh, that's One Last Kiss. Blow that's me one yeah. last kiss. Okay. Yeah, that's right. And one last, uh, one, 
Wait, one. I don't know anymore. Oh, I was. Last. I'm sorry. I was thinking of One Step Closer by Linkin Park. One Step Closer to that one. Yeah, yeah. And I'm about to break. That's a terrible one. It is. That was their first single, though. That was the first thing I ever heard by them. Maybe that's why I don't respect. Chester I think Pope. so. <laughs> um, Logan, November seventh, two thousand one. Not only was this the day America ended for good. Uh, it was the day Who Let the Dogs Out came out. Wow. And the creator of the Christmas Chronicles 2 was like, I have a great idea. You're right. Yeah. He used it. Christmas, <laughs> wasn't that like Chris Columbus directed Christmas Chronicles Oh, I think Chronicles you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But not the first one, I don't think. Or did he? No, just the second one. That's weird. Um, couple big album releases this day as well. How about this one? Well, I'll tell you. I'll I'll go in order of of how it'll matter to you, yeah. okay. In third place of how it'll matter to you, uh, one of my favorite bands, Granddaddy, released their seminal indie classic, The Software Slump. Okay, I've heard of that, I've heard of that but I've never heard of the the Interesting. band. Interesting. Okay, an incredible band, and that that is the the height of their career. That record. Um, I'll tell you what, Blink One Eighty Two released a live album. On this day. And the reason I want to bring it up on this podcast is because very embarrassingly, I listened to the fuck out of the Blink-182 live album. Not because of the music, Logan, because I found the between songs banter between Mark Hoppus and Tom (laughs) DeLonge hilarious. Okay, not (laughs) only that, but. Buffy's Angels listener, Josh Merlis, was friends with me at the time, and I distinctly remember forcing him to listen to that album, fast-forwarding through all the songs, <laughs> and only listening to the between, the between songs banter. That was going to be my question, which if was, you ever did which that was with mostly, Which was mostly the two of them calling each other gay. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, are they just like Beavis and Butthead, basically? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah. Um, All right. So that came out this day. But I think the most important album release, probably, how about this? Parachutes, the first Coldplay album. That's big. That was big. Yeah. That had uh, Yellow and it also had Trouble. Remember Trouble? I know Yellow more. I didn't mean to cause you trouble. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. I like that one. That's no, a great Taylor Swift song, by the way. Like Logan, top three. I 100% agree. I don't know about top three, but top five. Top five for sure. That's a yeah. banger. I think that's when yeah. I realized, like, oh, she's fucking here to stay. I knew you were trouble. That's no, no, no. See, I knew you were trouble was when I, I was like, she's someone to be reckoned with. Yeah, that, that was like a turning point, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Mind. Like, but oh, then, she's great. But then Shake It Off was when I was like, I will still be hearing about Taylor Swift the day that I dropped dead. That she will be with me for the rest of my life now. And you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Movies. You want to know what the movie, the box office was like? Because we yes. skipped a week. All right. Last we saw. Oh, for Meet Halloween. Meet the Parents. Right? Yeah, yeah. Meet the Parents was still dominating last we saw. Now it's dropped to second place. It's still amazing. It's been out for like a month and a half at this point. It's still in second place. Uh, but the number one movie in America debuting this week, Charlie's Angels. Wow. Never seen those still. You weren't with us when we covered that? Nope. And I I never saw the new one or the old one or the wow. middle ones. Can I give you some advice? Yeah, don't. Never, ever see the sequel to the original or the new one. Just go the rest of your life without watching those. You'll I thought be there was an old it. one. Like Ocean's Eleven has like an old version, right? Well, there is. It was a TV show in the 70s. Oh, it's only a show. I so, think I think the pilot of the TV show was two hours, and we covered it on the podcast when we did those. Yeah, that, that may be what I'm thinking, why I'm yeah. thinking that. So don't, so don't watch Full Throttle or the Christian oh, Stewart Oh, do one. yourself a favor. I promise you, you will die a happier man having not <laughs> seen either of those movies. But that first one by McGee is a pretty good time it's on my list of things to watch yeah i definitely want to yeah um number three at the box office is the legend of bagger vance that's a movie about a black golf ghost who helps matt damon become a better golfer yeah i've heard of it (laughs) yeah was he nominated for any awards 
Sounds like a real Oscar no. It, it was they were Oscars. yes, that was the plan, but then it got bad reviews. It was one of those. Yeah. Um, it was I believe directed by Robert Redford. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah, and that was like a big deal at the time. Robert Redford casting a very young Matt Damon. It was it felt like a passing the torch moment. Matt Damon had has had a incredible career, honestly. When you think about it, yes. And he and he's a, he's like aged beautifully. Remember, he, he's one of my favorite parts of Oppenheimer. Honestly, he should have been nominated instead of Robert Downey Jr. There's my take. Matt Damon. We got a SAG nomination. How oh, did he? He deserved it. Well, they you know the SAGs. Their number one thing, their big award at the end of the night is cast of the year. They nominate full casts, and so Matt Damon is is, is invited. I mean, he's nominated with the Oppenheimer cast for that award. I give it to uh, probably theater camp. Probably be my <laughs> <favorite>. Christ. <laughs> I don't give one. I still have to watch that. You know, yeah. I watched a Logan recommendation last night, but it wasn't that. No, you, what did you watch? I swear to you, I did. I watched. Um, I don't even remember now. Oh, the Poker House. You oh, watched the- it like when you were like doing your whole J Law marathon. Yeah, you liked it too. Yeah, I thought it was. I have mixed feelings on it, but it was, I mean, she's so good already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Number four at the box office, Remember the Titans, which I think has been out for a few weeks at this point. And then debuting in, at a disappointing number five, Logan. Oh, actually, I think it came out the previous week, but it didn't do well that week either, is uh, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Hmm. That movie has two really scary parts in it. That I remember all the is time. one like a seance. No, I remember one is like on a bridge. You just get like a quick shot of like this creepy little woman walking backwards on a bridge, and it's really scary. Is it possible you're scared of parts because you saw this movie when you were like six years old? Oh no, one hundred percent. I haven't seen this in forever, but <laughs> yeah. I, I remember that part and something else that I can't even remember at this time. Okay, well, do you think twenty twenty four is the year we cover Blair Witch on the on the podcast? I'd love to that. I feel like that remake might be kind of good. Uh, may, I mean, I've never seen any of them except for those original two. Yeah, I, I wait. Wait, is there only one remake? Yeah, I think so. I think that there's the f- first two, and then they've made one in like 2000. That was called The Blair Witch, right? Yeah, and it was advertised as like the woods or something, and then people sat down and it. Was oh, like, that's oh, right. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I remember that. The woods. I I totally remember that. That's right. Yeah. Um. Okay. You want to get into Buffy? Yes. Miss right. Kitty. Fan- oh, I can read to the director and writer. No, it's whatever. It's Joss. Joss Whedon took this one. He uh he likes Tara. I feel like for some reason he like really relates to Tara or some or something. Like I I feel like all of Tara's huge moments are written by Joss Whedon. Um, well, something else I think Joss including does a her lot. first appearance in Hush. Uh, what? I think I think he's good at at realizing like what the show really needs at a certain point, and like coming in and doing that kind of like yeah. Tara. I think we needed some more Tara, and he realized that. I think for sure we needed to cement Tara's place within the group. We haven't. Done she wasn't that. in last episode. She, I feel she's been in every other episode this season. She's been in. Um, I don't know. I feel like she was in like one, two, and four. Like one, two, four, six. I feel like that's been her her thing this season. And she's she doesn't become a regular or anything after this, but I do think it's really helpful because I mean it's odd to have a character that's in the show that much who only has a relationship with one other character. Yeah, I agree. But it, but even after this episode, she doesn't really leave with any other relationships i don't feel like but i think everyone understands her more and she feels closer to everybody so i think now if you put her in a storyline where it's like her with buffy or her with xander or her with giles i think that's a much more workable dynamic going forward from this episode yeah, they did the thing at the end of Spider Man where they're like, "If you want to get the him, you gotta go through us." They did that thing. I guess that's yeah, Spider Man. Yeah, too, that it? was in that was train. Buffy's best impression of New York City, of post nine eleven New York City. 
That was a sweet moment. I like Dodd even getting involved. Dodd was like, yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bubby says, she's a biter. Um, so uh, let's let's go. Your first notes about Miss Kitty Fantastico, huh? Yeah, she's just looking cute. Looking really I believe this is the last time we ever see her. What? She's been in like three episodes. I know. Maybe not even. Maybe two episodes. But it's right. always Joss way, Whedon. Joss Whedon loves shooting the cat. Where by the why by the way, where is Amy? Um We haven't seen her in twenty five episodes. I wanna I wanna just let you off the hook right now. There's no Amy in season five at all. Not even like that one moment she had in season four. Uh, see, I I thought you, that you said that she had a moment in every season, so that's why I was I I, I said every season except one, and mm. it's this one. But she yeah. is coming back, so we're not a baby. Oh yeah, we're we we remember Amy. I think one of my, one of the coolest parts is that my favorite episode with my favorite character is actually like huge. Like she's actually like we had so many episodes with one off characters that are nothing, <laughs> and and my but my favorite one from season one. Turns your out to be like a one. big thing. That that episode's now like number forty eight on your <laughs> list or something. You still well, call it your favorite. But I don't. Want, I don't want to ever forget it, so I like to acknowledge it. <laughs> okay. You know? So, sure. all right. So th- it's Tara and Willow. They're hanging out in their bedroom or whatever, and they're giving each other compliments. Tara calls Willow a vixen, and then they probably had sex after that part. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I think they probably did. Uh, so the Joss Whedon episode. So I think you could assume all the scenes in Joss Whedon episodes just end with whoever was in that scene fucking, including this one with Giles and Buffy <laughs> down in the living room, where Giles sure. learns that Don, the whole thing about Don, and he makes yeah. a good suggestion. I thought he said that we should send Don to go live with Dad. I thought that yeah, was a great plan. but we get it. But we get a Dad update. I guess so, a little. Up. But but this might not be that recent. Like this could have been what he was doing three months ago, right? All right, but still, we probably. haven't. We have not heard word one about fucking dad since season. Yeah, three. but we learn he's in Spain with his hot yeah young secretary living the cliche. The cliche. Oh, this is another thing you got wrong yesterday, right? Yeah, I thought that he. She you said, said he was you thought it was a, yeah. You thought it was a weird Joss Whedon line that he was living the dream. Why would yeah? I thought he was this? insinuating that his own dream was to marry <laughs> would, his secretary. But why would his? Face. But why would he write someone's daughter saying that? I don't know. I thought because I think he relates to the dad character, so he just wanted that to be him. Well, he was married. He was cheating. I think he would have liked to be the dad character at this point in his life. Is he married at this point? Oh, yeah. He was married the whole time he was doing Buffy. He was just fucking other people. So he is the dad character. He is cheating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he never had a kid, to be fair. He never today? He doesn't have a no. child? Yeah, yeah. Never never. There's reproduced. no Tony Whedon out there? <laughs> no. <laughs> no Nepo Whedon. <laughs> it probably be Xander Whedon. He probably just there was kids. <laughs> That'd be cute. Probably yeah, probably name, I, I probably treat it like this is the only thing he ever did. He'd name it after some obscure Shakespeare character or something. He'd be like fucking Rosencrantz Whedon. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So we so yeah, Giles had that moment. That was nice. We see that woman. Remember from that last episode that the, everything fell on top of her? But now she oh, breaks out. Yeah, she like punches through the, the yeah, Hank Beast. She punches through the rubble. And she has this line. She says, I forgot how it went now. It's been five days since I've seen this episode. But she says, okay, now I'm upset. And then we go yeah, to the credits. That's pretty much how that goes down. Did you, did you know what name I saw in the credits, D-Train? What? Oh, a- Amy Adams. But before we get to that, um, which is huge, I understand. <laughs> I, I I didn't want to tell you that beforehand because I knew it would blow your mind. Well, I think you did tell me she's in like I told you up. like ages ago, but I didn't want to tell you like right before we got to the episode. Oh, okay. Um. Anyway, what do you feel? How do you feel about Buffy only telling Giles about the Dawn thing? I love it. Do you? Yes, I do. Why? Because it engenders trust between Buffy and Giles, and you like that. No, and I'm not thinking about it like Survivor or anything. I'm thinking, I don't know. I think because it's re- it's really like a life or death situation. I don't think you want a lot of people knowing that, especially like 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 Anya, Anya, like Anya could tell people. True. Although I I just feel that after really coming back together as a team at the end of season four, I don't feel that there should be secrets between at least the core. Four. But this is something that she wasn't even supposed to find out herself, really. Yeah, 
So so okay. I don't I think this is fine. This is not like I I really I really actually like that. I'm glad you brought that okay. up. Okay. Okay, interesting. I like that I like your response. But I um, but I'm and at the end of this episode he's still the only one that knows. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, that was cool. So so, so you noticed Amy Adams' name in the credits. Yes, Amy Adams' name in the name of the credits. Oh, so we'll we'll get to her. She she's not really that that doesn't have that much to do. No, she has probably the least to do of anyone in her whole family. It's true, it's true. But she does have like a kind of a big scene like in the courtyard, which is pretty Yeah, good. yeah, where she calls Tara a fucking bitch. She does. Not a fucking bitch. I think she just said a bitch. I think you added that part, right? Yeah, I, I added the fucking. You can't say that on the show. Yeah. May, may, yeah. Can you not? Can you not say one? Uh, No, not a single one. Okay. I guess that makes sense. So I like this. I like this part where we're all helping. I remember helping. I remember NYPD Blue had to lobby to say shit once. They like shit, went to the shit. They had a back on network TV on ABC. No, they had to go to the president of the network and get permission. And they like from they had to like do a whole thing like there's going to be a bad word on NYPD Blue tonight. Don't watch it. Uh <laughs> isn't it a isn't it a thing that Psycho has the first ever toilet flushing in a movie? Oh, I think I have heard that. Yeah. And I, I know that yeah. I know that the first ever toilet flush on TV was all in the family. I happen to know that. Which one in the family flushed the toilet, you remember? Uh probably Archie, right? Oh, it's gotta be Archie. Yeah. Fucking Archie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're helping Buffy move out of her her dorm, right? This is all fun. We're all having a great time, like making yeah. jokes. But and they're all confused. They're all confused that Buffy's moving out so soon. Like she apparently just moved. Like the semester just started a couple episodes ago. So like I thought it was already moving too. her out. Well, but the reason is because she wants to be closer to Dawn, but she's not telling people that yet. Oh, I don't even think I understood that. I sort of bought her thing about Joyce because Joyce is sick. Oh, well, there's that, too. But I, I, I think it's that she wants to be in close vicinity to Dom. Yeah, I, th I think that you're right. But she says, like, oh, I've gone, like, because of Joyce. And Joyce is not in, in this episode either. But I was, just, I was just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But this scene's fun. I like this part. I brought up how she does the thing from Scary Movie where she goes, stupid, and hits herself on the head. Oh, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's uh, Luke Wilson's move. Yeah, Luke Wilson's playing... Uh, Billy and he, he goes. Stupid. It's not a scary and, movie too. It's Scream Two. You're thinking of like this. The, sh the oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it it's like a clip from Stab <laughs> that they. That's see why I get him confused because it's Scream neither. Because it's yeah. Because it's like a mix of the two. It's, it's not a spoof doofy. of the real it, movie. It's not Doofy. It's 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 Dewey and Randy watching this on TV, and it's Luke Wilson playing Billy Loomis. Yes, um, absolutely. Yeah. Who who is it? Um. Oh, I'm forgetting her name. Tori Spelling. It's Tori Spelling, right? Yeah, yeah. Because um, they made that joke in the first movie. Who's it going right? to be? Tori Spelling? Yeah, yeah. With my luck, they'd cast Tori Spelling. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to watch Scream today. <laughs> uh, so Willow brings up something. She tells everybody that it's Tara's birthday coming up. We didn't really know that. But it's yeah. Tara's birthday coming up. Yeah, that's big. Tara. Yeah. What yeah, do you I'll think she's turning? what to get her. Maybe 21. No, she's turning 20. Her dad says you're turning 20. Oh, that, well, oh like that's right. Because, yeah, all the women, and when they turn 20, they go evil or something. Wasn't that a thing all recently right. where, like, it was like when you turn 18, something happens? Hmm. I don't know. Is that a what Buffy referring thing? When to? She turned... Was she helpless when she was 18? Was that what happened? Oh, yeah. They had to do the cruciamentum, okay, which is where they take her gonna... powers away and throw her Man, that's a great episode. Body. Helpless. That's that a is one. a great one. Yeah. Classic. David. David Fury. Wow, he's great. The so there's that we got her the birthday coming up, Doctor Ben. Yeah, wow, another doc. This is like three consecutive episodes with Doctor Ben. Can you believe it? Yeah, I can believe it. Here's my theory. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's fucking Joss Whedon. Oh wow! He even has a sh Joss even told him he said, "Hey, pop that shirt off, Ben. We're gonna get a little shirtless shot Man. of you in your locker for this one." No, I don't, that's not really my theory. But he's that he's was expanding weird. his casting purview this season. He could have been doing it all along. We, we, we just this is the first one we really thought about. Yeah, he puts the perv in casting purview. Um, I don't really know what that is. <laughs> all I right, that was just a perv thing that you said. Good joke. It's a good joke. Uh, yeah. Um, you know right. who his coworker was? You notice that? His co Ben's coworker? Yeah, there's like a guy. He's like, we got another crazy over here. No, who was it? It's the Drift King. From Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Are you fucking serious? DK. Yeah. 100% serious. But the, Wait, I guess really? 
The Drift King, yeah. Like the actual, the guy who played DK, DK in that movie. DK from Tokyo Drift. That's him right there in that moment. Look it up. Uh, but yeah, I think I think this is kind of going to be an ongoing thing where because there's another crazy patient. So is that going to be like that location is going to be important, kind of or something? Yes, you're 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 picking up what they're putting down. Okay, so there we go. And it, here I have another theory. Here I feel like this Ben thing had like a lot of weird things here, but kind of important. Where the demon is going to go to Ben, and you think he's going to like attack Ben probably is what they're intending but here's my theory i think he's gonna go talk to his good buddy ben i think they're friends that demon is was friends with ben how's Wait. that for a theory Fr friends with ben <laughs> friends with friends with ben, ben. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right, um, so there we go that's what i think that's funny but uh, but uh hank beast is are there you sure it's dk i just looked him up and it's not him oh am i racist i think you're wrong about this no way Hang on, I I looked up I tr I looked up who I thought was Drift King in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Let me just look up straight. Oh, you up. did it a crazy way. You're racist. What'd you look up? Jackie Chan or something? <laughs> you talking about? <laughs> I'm looking. This it guy, up too, he's though. the Drift King. What's his name? I don't know. I don't know. Brian T. Yeah, Brian T. Brian T. This guy's the Drift King. You're right, DK. It says it right here. DK. You, I'm you so sorry. Me. You're right. Really no, no, sorry. no. You got it. You got it. Brian T. That's yeah. That's definitely his name. Wow. Good for Brian T. Popping up here. Yeah. Oh, well, he's good for him Chicago. for popping up there. He's a regular on Chicago Med these days. So shout out to him. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool, actually. Great career. <laughs> um. So there we go. That, that. So there's the thing, and the Hank B grabs the demon as she recruits him to go kill Buffy. Yeah. 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 So Anya, Anya's loving her job. She's like talking to all the customers. She's like, have a great day. Come back later. Spend more money. I love you so much. And <laughs> uh, and I, th I think she's going to, here's my prediction for, for Anya, employee of the month. We give her employee wow. of the month. Wow, okay. We put a little what plaque up. Anya, employee of the month. That'll be great. Uh, it so would we're be talking great. about, what do we get Tara for her, for her birthday? Ah, I like the part where Giles says that they're really stupid because they're in a magic shop and can't figure out what to get Tara. Yeah. The magic and, is good or something. And then someone says, like, what, well, what are we going to get her? Some fucking magic, like a crystal ball or some shit? And Giles responds, uh, like, well, you certainly better not. Mine's already gift wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, so Buffy's like stressing. Like because of this, because of the Dawn stuff, because of her mom, she's got a lot going on right now. And Xander tells her to go work out, go like, go like, get rid of some of that stress, right? So we get to a scene where Buffy is fighting Spike, and you're like, is this real? What's going on here? And it it ends where she has this line about she, like Spike says, "Bring it on, Buffy," and she's like, "I'm coming, I'm coming, Spike." And then and then we go to him having sex with Harmony. And you're like, oh, it was it was, it was harmony to... coming. Yeah, that's a great. That's great. Yeah. Or it was him. What was it himself or was it her? I. I... Oh, that's a good point. It was probably it, that happens. And then he yeah. just sort of lays down. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like in that moment he's he's splashing in. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> it's a Joss Whedon episode, you gotta have a harmony sex scene in there, huh? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, but this was great, and you you tell how much he likes her. He's dreaming about Buffy, and she's like, "What are you thinking about, Pumpkin?" I I, I act like she's Harley Quinn or something. Harmony. It, uh, it that is sort of the dynamic at this point. I mean, <laughs> a little bit. People think of Harley Quinn and Joker as being like Bonnie and Clyde or some shit, but the original dynamic between them was Joker treated her like, like shit. Oh yeah, yeah. They like yeah. You know, that's the craziest part about that relationship. They like romanticize that, but he they like po poison each other and like yeah try to kill each other. It's crazy. Yeah. Oh my god. Not good. But all right. So here we I go. Had, I, when I was in rehab, there was this one girl who used to post on Facebook all the time, just like weird made up memes of her and her boyfriend as joker and harley and i was just like i wanted to pull her aside and i was like from those memes i can tell you're in a bad relationship <laughs> and, and i need you to know that what if they just don't know the lore that much like that some people just don't 
They just like hop on the I, trend. I think if someone has the ability to watch that first fucking Suicide Squad movie, that's true, and really connect to it, I then something's wrong in their lives. Yeah. What if they connect to the Will Smith character? He's just trying to do it for his daughter. You mean Deadshot? Deadshot. We never saw him again, did we? No, I don't believe we did. He was pretty good, part of that movie. Him and Harley, those are the two takeaways. I don't remember anything being good about that movie. Those two things. Mm. All right. What? What's Kevin I mean, Rankin Harley, shows up? Yeah, Kevin Rankin, the great. I've been seeing a lot of him lately because I've been rewatching Friday Night Lights, and he's in there. Um, I Is love like Kevin Rankin. End? No, he actually plays the 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 quarterback who gets paralyzed. He plays oh, like geez. a wheelchair friend of his. That's a good uh, role. They play murder ball together. Um, but uh, I love Kevin Rankin. He's a great TV actor. Always happy to to see him pop up. So uh, I I'd forgotten he was in this. Like I I t- tuned into this episode the other day, going like, "All right, the Amy Adams episode. Let's do it." I didn't notice him in the credits either. If he was, yeah. But uh, but no, it's it's him. It's it's yeah. I'm not lying. There he is. Yeah, neither one of us are lying. It's really it's really him. Um, that'd be crazy. But, if they didn't believe us. Like Amy Adams, they believed, but we had to convince them Kevin Rankin was in the episode. Yeah, you're full of shit, Kevin Rankin. Too. <laughs> no way. Yeah, yeah. They couldn't sure. get Kev the Kev dog. You no know what way. blew my mind though was the dad. His the actor's name is Steve Rankin. Yeah, I brought that up yesterday. That was you crazy. did. Yeah, yeah. I I, I googled it. Because I, I kind of assumed, I was like, is Kevin Rankin a fucking Nepo baby? I had no idea. Yeah, I did the same exact thing. But no, they're not related. Just two dudes named Rankin playing <laughs> terrorist family members. I've never heard that name, really. Yeah, me neither. But that's actually kind of crazy. Like, they have to be kind of, somehow. I don't know. Probably, I don't know. Do you think he cast them on purpose? Because he was like, wow, that's Kismet. Get the They're two both pretty good for their there. role. I don't. They know. are, yeah. I think they I don't really, it's, it's just cra- a crazy coincidence. But so, te- so Rankin, Kevin Rankin is the brother. Steve Donnie. is the dad. Donnie. Don. What's Don's or Tara's last name? They should have gone Donnie from Big Brother to play Donnie. I agree. Mm. Hey guys, I'm here. I'm here. Tara, <laughs> you're my sister. Tara, you're my. That's a terrible impression. Donnie. Yeah. And people thought Xander, Donnie was going to come back. Xander could have made fun of his beard at the end. Um, remember, remember they thought he was in the military, but he was just a groundskeeper. <laughs> I, do, I do Kay, kind of remember. Caleb that, was yeah. like, he has like tan marks on. He wears yeah. long socks with his boots, so he has tan marks from being in the military. That was the Caleb season. Oh, Big Brother sixteen had everybody. That dude. season's amazing. It's one of the worst seasons. It is not. It is. It has. You just great... say, oh, it's boring because the winner is so dominant. Whatever. That is what I was going to say. Yeah. He just wipes the floor with those losers. Yeah. It's good. It's interesting to watch. I loved that season. Of course it because, is. I love all Big Brother. Because, look, the, the game, all you have to do is focus on on the uh, Hitman. And the characters, every single one's good. Yeah, it's with, it's Frankie and Zach and Nicole. Remember Christine's, like, giving blowjobs? But of course. Boyfriend? Of course I do. <laughs> and then you I, watched her I give blowjobs to her boyfriend that. on OnlyFans. Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh that's it. right. That Christine. I forgot about that. And, and Amber from the chal Amber Borzotra from the challenge was on that one. That's right. That's Borzoch. a huge cast. Huge cast. Who else? Who else? Who were like the early guys on that season? There's the guy, big guy, who uh always talked about his son. What? Or his daughter. He was talking about how he had a kid. Remember. Come on, come on. He had he looked like the rock. Oh, that guy. Oh, my God. All I remember about him is that one challenge where they had to go in a box and he was yes. just pushing it's the like box a dice. Around they're in dice. Complete- yeah, they're- he's pushing it around just totally aimlessly, but furiously. <laughs> yeah, he- they had to land the dice on the top. Yeah, that guy's great. We had Joe. His name was Devin, by the way. Joey had the blue hair. She was the first. Loved boot. her. Loved her. I thought she was 15, but I guess you're right. Okay. Yeah. Paolo. Pow pow. pow 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 of course yeah uh, jacosta oh Brittany, she had to kick like 2600 field goals or 2600 oh, yeah. soccer goals mm-hmm. and hayden hayden was the other pre hayden voss guy. of hayden course voss not hayden yeah. Voss, who was that's also right big brother yeah and he dated nicole one of like her four victims stay tuned gang to uh hey i'm watching here because uh this little 
fella over here, the D train. That's me, guys. I watched five episodes of The Traders yesterday, so I'm ready to talk about Dan Geesling. Me too. Me too. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, there's her family. We're going to like hang I have, out with them for dinner. I have some stuff about Amy Adams here. No. Oh, well, okay. Two, two fun facts about Amy Adams and her previous relations to Buffy. Okay. All right. Here's two weird things about Amy Adams. Are you ready? The summer before season five of Buffy, she stars in a movie called Psycho Beach Party. Have you ever seen it? No, but I think I've heard of it. Check it out. She drops boobs in that. Um, but uh, <laughs> in that movie, her boyfriend is played by Nicholas Brendan. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. All right. So I wonder if Nicholas Brendan had anything to do with Amy Adams ending up on the show. But that's not all, Logan. Prior to this, they also wait. It might have been after this. I think after this, they made a pilot called Manchester Prep for Fox that was based on the movie Cruel Intentions. OK, they ended up not making the show and they turned the pilot into a direct to DVD sequel called Cruel Intentions 2. It's actually a prequel, I think. And in that prequel, Amy Adams plays Sarah Michelle Geller's part from the original Cruel Intentions. I think I actually knew that that part. I think I knew in Cruel Intentions 2 that it was Amy Adams. I guess I didn't know it was the same character, but I feel like I did know that. Same character. That's amazing. But that, that's a little later, you think? All I'm saying is Amy Adams is steeped in Buffy the Vampire Slayer lore. She's dripping in it. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go watch that movie though. I gotta be honest. Any chance Joss Whedon it. fucked Amy Adams? You know, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't want to believe. That. I think she so believes in her talent that she's like the type of person that feels like I she didn't she doesn't need to do that. Yeah, maybe that's why they never brought her back again. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Uh, all right. What what's next? Uh, so that's her family. Uh, Riley, we were, well, I guess he was in the scene earlier in her dorm, but he moved her into her home. He's at her house moving her in. But he only he, now she's not doing it to be nice. He does it because he likes all the sexual favors that he gives her or that she yeah. gives him, I guess. She says there might be outfits. Yeah, I guess that's pretty good. I guess that's yeah. motivation to move her stuff. Did you start on. picturing Sarah Michelle Gellar in outfits after that? No, I was too focused on the one she was wearing. I was like, what would she look like as a sexy nurse? <laughs> <laughs> what would she look like as a sexy maid? Probably not yeah. as hot as Cordelia for the last oh, Angel episode. Listen to this guy. Just All kidding. Right. Just kidding. Probably better. I don't want to compare. What are we doing? Oh, listen to this guy even more. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> uh, so, so there we go. Um, so, so Don wants to go to her friend Melinda's house. I think this was as far as we got. I don't think we got past this part. No, we. I. I. I, I can't believe we got to this part. Oh well, oh that's what I was saying earlier. Like we, I, I went through a lot of the episode, like you were like just, but you were just reading your notes. Well, we would have been talking about my notes if it wasn't just me talking. Well, I was checked out by that point. I know, I know. But Melinda, or is, are we going to meet Melinda, Don's friend? I don't remember. We do meet some Don friends over the over the, you know. We do, but... Uh, well, I hope she's playing, and she's like, throw it over here, Melinda. And we're like, oh, go <laughs> That's Melinda. Uh, Honestly, that that, that might happen. I'm such a good writer. I should write this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so Riley, he brings up a part where he's like... He, he like, recommends, like, co contacting the initiative, but Buffy, like, blows it off. And he seems to get really pissed by that. He's like, I, 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 you won't even take my suggestions, Buffy. God damn. And then he leaves. That's not good. Riley? Yeah, well, he he's, really he's feeling sensitive. He's he's like, I'm just hanging around because I'm obsessed with this lady and it is not doing anything for me. And it's a bummer. And I think yeah. it's I think what Graham said to him at the end of uh, Out of My Mind is still ringing in his ears, too. Of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And another thing is he after this episode, he can't be happy because like Spike saves Buffy. Right. Buffy's like about to be attacked by those demons that they can't see. And Spike goes in and saves her. And yeah. like Riley could never do that, you know. It's a, a romantic rival. Yeah, that he is. I feel like if he finds out about that, he cannot be happy. But all right, so we get. Uh, well, we learned the thing about how uh, she's turning twenty, 
I guess this is where her her dad's like in her dorm room, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, so this all turns out to be bullshit. But apparently, the thing with Tara's family, which we find out Tara's last name for the first time this episode, McClay. Um, but uh, the in her family, evidently, what they do is they tell all the women that there's witch in their family and so they have to like stay close to home it's like a way of keeping them in line like not letting them get out into the real world you know um and and this goes back to uh goodbye iowa season four episode 14 of buffy where we see um uh tara she sabotages a demon locator spell that she and willow are doing and the reason for that is that she thinks that she'll show up on the map as a demon right because she believes that she has asked you know aspects of a demon in her genetically through her mom yeah i i thought about that in that part i remember that um that was a real that was a memorable moment yeah and I think it was so memorable because it was it was really like only for setup that scene. Like it didn't really oh, yeah. do much it, other than give us that yeah. moment. It's so one it really of the only it's one of the only scenes that is just there as a little mystery. And they nailed it. So yeah. you planned it this whole time, this whole thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. And so yeah, that's the whole thing. They think that when she when she turns twenty, she's gonna turn into a demon because that's what happened with the mom. So yeah. that's the thing. And. Uh, another scene we only see the, I don't really know what to call her so I'm just going to call her Hank Beast until we know what to call her you, you can call her the Beast so far but okay so we'll she, get a name we'll get a name for her eventually but I don't remember whether it's like a reveal or anything so I don't want to say it yet okay I, I feel like you did last week uh, yeah I, I I fucked up and I said it but yeah, you I don't like remember I, I kinda, so. no I feel like I kind of know it <laughs> do you you can say it uh, it's it's probably I don't want to say it okay right. then I'll, I'll bleep it out I don't want to do that so we have yeah I mean whatever she like tells the demon go kill Buffy whatever who cares so Tara there's like a scene where Willow and Tara Willow's like come to the come to the magic box with me but Tara doesn't really want to and the reason is because she's going to put a whole spell on them while they're at the, the I keep wanting to call it the Waffle House but it's called the magic box. <laughs> and it's yeah. Waffle House. It's clearly not Waffle House. But so so that's what happens. They go there and they're all doing the, the research on who the Hank Beast is. But then Tara comes in and like sprinkles a little bit of magic dust in there. Right. And so that's good. And then Riley, I, I actually really liked this scene. Riley goes to a bar. And Do you know was a bar? This, yeah, was this Willie's bar? Willie's it was Lucy's Willie's bar. bar. They, there's a different bartender working there, but it certainly says Willie's right there. Yeah, I think they even mentioned him. They're like, yeah, he's not here today. Yeah, yeah. I love the woman who comes up, though, next to Riley. Yeah, Sandy. She's really funny. She starts hitting on him. I actually think he kind of hits on her first. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, I drink. kind of feel that way, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then uh, she, he, like, realizes that she is a vampire, so he's no longer interested. And she gets really annoyed. But she's really good annoyed in that moment, I think. So yep. shout out to uh, her. We have seen this character before, and we this will character. see her again. No yeah. way. When? Yeah. Um, okay, so if you'll recall, season three, episode 15, which was written by Joss Whedon, it's called Doppelgangland. Oh, no. Okay. What? Another Joss. He brought her back. You know. Might something. be episode 16. Oh, well, yeah, that 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 very much might be true. I didn't even think of that. Oh, but... Yeah. um. But yeah, it, I'm coming into this from that perspective. So anytime I hear stories, it's the first thing I think of. Yeah, I understand. Um, but uh, in Doppelgangland, that's you remember which episode that is? Of course. Okay, Willow. It's, it's a vampire Willow. Vampire Willow. Right. So in that episode, do you remember? Bored now. That, yes, that there's a scene where she's walking through the bronze. Yeah, and she takes the picks up a girl and bites her. Yes, this is that girl. Yeah, you told me I believe that she comes back. So this is her. yeah. I she looks different. Her. I feel like I feel like she was like she blonde does. in that episode. She's brunette in this episode, maybe. She, I think she might have darker hair in this one. But uh, but this is that character that that's Sandy. Evidently, Vampire Willow turned her into a vampire with the intention of adding her to her gang or whatever. That's all. Awesome. And uh, and now here she is again, hanging out in Willie's. Yeah, this moment by itself worked, but then with that added context, it's it's even better. 
Yeah. So, and sh- you said she'll be back again for Thursday? Yeah, she'll turn up again. On a Joss episode, do you know? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I feel like it still doesn't change that much. I think it might be a Marty Noxon episode. Um, But uh, I, I also just want to say that just randomly, I don't understand why even. or Like, it's so low you can barely hear it. But in the background of this scene, they are playing the song Tears Are In Your Eyes by one of my favorite indie rock bands, Yola Tango. Super obscure, cool indie rock band of the 90s and early aughts. And um, and I discovered them through this. Cool. So am I. I've never heard of that band or that song. I'd heard of them, but I think the first song of theirs I ever downloaded was this one just because it was in a Buffy episode. And then I got super fucking into that band. That album is on the super, I mean, that song is on the super experimental album called And Then Nothing Turned Itself Inside Out. It's a great record. And uh, long title. Yeah, uh, They always had long titles. They had another one called I Can Feel the Heart Beating as One. They had another one called I Am Not Afraid of You and I Will Beat Your Ass. And another one um, called Burn. <laughs> <laughs> they actually did have an album just called painful um <laughs> it should be pain that'd be better painfulness <laughs> would be like what they would do. yeah totally <laughs> um but anyway that's uh i that just it's always mind-blowing for me to hear yola tango in a buffy episode so yola tango that's an interesting word is that two words or one word three words it's oh, like yola spanish tango? yola tango yeah oh, i thought you were saying yola tango no, I guess you were. Well, that's that's know. sort of how they that's sort of how they say it. But okay, it's written as three words. Uh, so Spike, he remember that mannequin? I forgot what episode, but he had the he had the mannequin. It was out of my mind. I think what I out of my head. <laughs> uh, and here he is. He's like he remember that was like Buffy. He was treating it like it was Buffy. And here yeah. he is. He's like he's holding the head and he's looking at it all like longingly, looking looking at it. And it's really beautiful. But then Harmony comes in and he's like, oh, oh what's going on? And he just t- tosses it, <laughs> and throws it off. And Harmony, she's coming back from shopping. She ran into a woman, Carol. And apparently Carol's talking about how she knows a demon who's going to kill the Slayer. I didn't understand this story, but whatever. Uh, so Spike heads off. He's going to go uh, watch. Well, she, she just quote. got some information about the demon was hired. But I want to say the fun thing for me in this scene is that she says she was shopping and she killed the 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 clerk at the store she was at and the bags she's holding say April Fools dude she was shopping at the store that Cordelia was working at to pay for her prom dress and so wow. i wonder yeah so i was wondering in that scene whether she killed that one boss lady at that store that was kind of <laughs> mean to Cordelia <laughs> that's amazing i really hope so i knew yeah. i knew the thing april fools i i forgot that that was the same place as cordelia's yeah. wow I hope she did kill her. That'd be amazing. Justice for Cordelia. Does Harmony <laughs> know Cordelia at all? Have they interacted? I don't think What so. are you talking about? They were best friends in high school. Oh, what am I fucking talking about? Harmony had a whole life before this. <laughs> I forgot about. Oh, my God. Terrible job by me. Uh, so here we go. Everybody is, or Tara, I guess, is outside. She's leaving. She runs into her sister, Beth. Amy Adams. It's not her sister. It's her cousin. <laughs> That's her cousin? Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, they set that up. Like, Donnie's her brother, but Beth is just her first cousin. Oh, shit. That's weird. I thought it was... Yeah, I didn't know that. So, Beth's... That's why it's it's always so weird. Like, it would be one thing you could tell people, like, did you know Amy Adams played Tara's sister on Buffy? It's Amy Adams played Tara's cousin on Buffy. Yeah, they're like, who is Tara again? Yeah. You have to explain like, Tara. Like, a super then... minor character's cousin. It's honestly one of the weirdest roles any famous person's had. Yes, it really is. <laughs> like, like a supremely like Oscar worthy person. Uh, anyway, I mean that's probably not true. People have been in like, like McDonald's commercials. Those are probably weird. No, I know, but it's so crazy. It's just like you know. Did you know that Tara's cousin is eight years away from doubt? <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and so she calls her a bitch. She calls her a selfish bitch. Actually, I think. And for not wanting to like go with go back with them or cooperate, I don't know. But here she learns that she's been putting a spell on all of them, so they're they're actually not even going to know that she's a demon. She's just going to just get away with it, I guess. Yeah, real screaming Jay Hawkins type. This one, am I right? Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking. He puts a spell on you. Okay, oh, that's pretty good. 
Uh, so there's like a big thing the demons show up but nobody can see them so they're all just like walking around and they start fighting them yeah there's some creepy shots of the demons yeah, like wandering cool. around the magic box unnoticed I feel like one with dawn like dawn's walking around and there's like mm -hmm. one right behind her i think it like grabs dawn she can't do anything it's scary but uh spike shows up and helps them all buffy at one point curb stomps one i noticed that on on some steps that was crazy yeah, great. That was probably her best kill she's ever had. <laughs> and we get the whole reveal that Tara's a demon, but really, uh, she's not. I mean, the way we learn that is Spike punches her in the face, and I guess realizes, oh, I can punch her, so she's not a demon. Yeah, Did yeah, because right? Spike can't punch humans, and so it when he punched her and it hurt, he realized that she has no demon in her. Yeah, I guess pretty pretty good, Spike. <laughs> so, uh, so it's all just like a. I don't know. It's like a family legend or whatever. You know, it kind of reminded me of the movie Bo is Afraid. How she tells him, like, if you when you have sex, you're going to die. So he, like, never has sex forever and it ruins his life. And, like, all the little big family that he imagined and everything. Yeah. And then he has sex I, and it's, like, the opposite I mean, of what he thought. that's definitely a metaphor for, like, conservative families. Like. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, th this has been a thing for a long time. I remember we covered Clerks 2. There's that storyline where, like. Elias's girlfriend says she has like gnomes living in her vagina so they can't have sex. Yeah. Sadly, I do remember <laughs> that character. <laughs> oh my god. Was he in the first one? No, right? No, no. He's just in the second and third. And um, third. Yeah. Uh, I okay, wish I never we're... watched that third movie. Oh, me too. We did that the same episode as Jurassic World Dominion. Did you know that? That is... That is one of the, that's like, the opposite. We're going to quit the podcast silence. during Hannibal. And, yeah. and, and we managed to get through that. Yeah. It's, it really is. That episode is the opposite of Silence of the Lambs Manhunter. <laughs> it is. And, and, and to be honest, I think we did something else. I think it was like those two things and like some of a TV show or something. Oh, maybe. Maybe we did the Equalizer TV show or something. It might have been Lightyear. It might have been like Lightyear. Lightyear. <laughs> Holy shit. Jesus. I don't know if that's true, but I want to say anything. But anyway, so big party at the end, Tara's birthday party, right? Dawn's first time at the bronze, apparently. Oh, I guess so. Yeah, it would be. Yeah. That's great. And yeah, she's got the stamp, right? She can't get any drinks. That's very Yeah. Funny. She's just drinking I feel like Joyce, losers. I feel like Joyce she? would be there. Joyce, she's sick. I know, but she and Tara are close. Um, I feel like I know wait, she's what sick more than you know she's sick. You keep forgetting that. <laughs> I'm not. I have not forgotten. She's just not fucking dead she's she's still out there yeah 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 um so so great stuff here uh giles gives her his the little magic ball magic crystal ball that he got her but then will but then dawn steps in the way she got her big broomstick <laughs> yeah she won up with that. a big broomstick you brought that up yesterday too <laughs> yeah that was amazing and yeah. one of my favorite endings we talk about it a lot a lot of great oh this endings. one the 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 hovering above the dance floor. Not even that necessarily. I love the line. I love when Tara says Willow. She asks her something. She says she says you always make me feel so special. How do you do that? And Willow says magic. And then they're they're floating Aww. above the thing. I yeah, that was great. That was great stuff. It's very sweet. Yeah, yeah. Great, great incredible ending. Yeah, it uh, really goes, makes it. You know, I I do think this is the episode where. I go from, okay, so I was a big Willow fan, obviously, you know, one of my favorite characters on the show, and I was always very invested in her romantic relationships, okay? So her interest in Xander in the first two seasons, I remember being very invested in that, and then her relationship with Oz, obviously, okay? Right. And so then when she starts dating Tara in college, I always was like fully on board with that as a storyline, but it always felt to me in my head that that was a storyline and that Oz was really like her, her true one true love or whatever, the love of her life. Okay. But I think watching this episode for the first time, I very distinctly remember getting to this ending and for the first time feeling that no Tara is the primary relationship of Willow's life now. And like, it's not a storyline to me anymore. Like Tara is the love of Willow's life. Yeah. I don't really, f I don't know. I don't really think like that way, like that their storyline, I just kind of follow it as it goes. 
I don't know. Yeah, I, we're going week to week, though. I, I don't know. Like, for me, when you're like, so young, like everyone you think is you're going to end up with kind of like it. So kinda, I, think, I think I just think about it from her perspective. Like, she probably thought she was going to be with Oz. So I kind of thought she was going to be with Oz. She thinks she's going to be with Tara. So I think she's going to be with Tara. I think it was rare at that time in television to set up as convincing a relationship as Willow and Oz and to not just go forward with that. I think it's because their chemistry, they were so good together. Yeah, exactly. It was undeniable. They were like best friends, weren't they? It was undeniable, but they denied it. Yeah. And and that is what I wasn't, I'd never seen before and, and why I think I was maybe a little resistant at first to accepting Willow and Tara as a serious thing. What if, what if Josh was like, well, it makes no sense that she's not with Oz. They were, so what's the, she has to be gay. That has to be this character. It makes no sense that she wasn't with Oz unless she was gay. Was that the thinking? No, because according to Joss Whedon, the intention to make Willow gay was with him at least as far back as season three. That's why he he has like the thing in Doppelgangland where right willow, willow says that vampire willow was kind of gay and buffy says well don't worry like vampires are nothing like like is it right has nothing to do with you no it's angel angel because he's, yeah. he's a vampire <laughs> he he goes well actually yeah of course it's not riley that's another question that did not moment. exist yet yeah, yeah we, we talked about that but we, we might not have if i didn't know about um that movie which we yeah. have we still have we even got to that part yet new mutants part yeah that was in hush We've seen that. that yeah, scene. yeah. They should hush in New Mutants. Don't they show two scenes in New Mutants? They do. The next one we might not have seen yet. I don't remember what it was exactly. There's but... one kissing, like Willow kissing somebody. I feel like we haven't seen that. Yeah, I think that's Willow kissing. Um... Don't, don't say Oh, it, don't say I know exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't, haven't don't seen say. that yet. So they showed two episodes. One of them is um, Hush, and the other one is later this season. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew we were waiting on one of them. Yeah. So anything else on this episode? Should we give it a star rating? Yeah, yeah. Um I don't know. I always felt like this one was a three. Here's my problem uh, with it. Yeah. The villain is just people that were hired yeah. by the cool person I really wanted to see. This is again like the one real me, where I think what they have in mind for the episode is character based. And it's almost like the villains of the episode or the monsters of the week or whatever are an afterthought. I really don't think that was a thing before this season, but you see it in real me. You kind of see it in out of my mind. We're like doing episodes here and there where they're way more interested in the human element than the demon element. And it's to the detriment of the demon part of the show. Yes, which is crucial in setting up a new demon villain. C correct. Um, that's my main issue, but I really liked all the other stuff, kind of. No, I, I do, too. To me, the uh, the meat of the episode, which is the terror stuff, is all really good. Yeah, it, it's fine. I feel like she could have had, like, deeper connection with her family. Like, she liked them, but she had to get out or something. Like, she, I don't know. I feel like that I never really, like, got that they loved each other. Well, I don't think they did. She doesn't love her family at all? No, I, I, I think it, it was a really toxic family that was trying. Like, I think she escaped that family when she came to Sunnydale. Okay. And so, like, it, to me, it was almost like we needed something in the scene where her dad confronts her in her dorm room. Do you remember the scene uh, a couple weeks ago in Angel, that episode Untouched, where that girl's dad, Bethany Chalk's dad, shows up at the hotel and like all the windows in the hotel explode? Yes. Like her, the force of her psychic trauma. Uh, I almost felt like we needed a bigger moment like that in the scene with Tara and her dad to help sell that going back to this family would genuinely be completely disastrous for Tara and her development as a person. I like that Tara, uh, the actress, Amber Benson, um, in the scenes that she has one-on-one -on -one with her dad and Beth, she brings out the stutter like way more than she does when she's talking to the Buffy characters. Yeah, that's good. Because, she, because she's less comfortable around the family. I think this was the most prominent episode for the stutter. It was all over the place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah.
I think the like stutter. Sloppy way. I think the stutter way. maybe only ever existed for the intention of this episode. Yeah, I, I kind of had that thought too. Actually, I think you yeah. might be right, especially if Joss was all planned. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I say I really liked it, but I actually didn't. Even, I didn't rank it that high. And looking ahead of it, I wanted to kind of move it higher, but I'm not really sure if I can. Uh, we've had. I'll give it three. By the way, what are you gonna do? I, I'll give it three too. It's, there's another Joss Whedon episode called Amends in season three, the Christmas one, where it like yeah. snows at the end and Angel mm-hmm. can't kill himself and shit. I always think of this one as being exactly as good as that one. On the Joss Whedon scale, these episodes belong together. So where do I have Amends on my ranking? Yeah, I think I need to do like a another relook at everything, like a broad look at the episodes and stuff. Because I I think my rankings are getting a little out of whack. My rankings are getting a little out of whack. Nice, bro. <laughs> I've had 84 episodes, and I rank this 62 between okay. What's My Line 1 and Go Fish. Is it better than What's My Line 1? Should I put it between What's My Lines? <laughs> or between uh, Out of My Mind, What's My Line 2? Yeah, I think it's weird to split up the What's My Lines with That's this episode. That's why I have it. I know, but I kind, of, I kind of feel like it's in the zone. I'll go ahead. I'll go 60 between Out of My Mind and What's My Line 2. So a little, few, a little header. All right. Where, where I do I have amends? 51 out of 84. And what's after amends? I looked away for one second. New oh. moon rising. All right, read me down from that. A new man, something blue, phases, no eye and Oh, you could pop. No, I'm okay with uh, pop this after new moon rising. So between new moon rising and a new man. So you have it 53 yeah. and I have it 60. It's pretty good. Yeah, man. all right. Um, Who's your MVP? See, I think the move is to go Tara, but I'm going to go with Willow. Willow. I think she's really sweet in all of her scenes, really supportive. And I feel like even if she learned she was a demon, she would still love Tara. She wouldn't turn on her. I'm going to go. We can't neither of us go Tara. I thought you'd go Tara. so I went Yeah, all right. all right. I'll go Tara. That's fine. Okay. Um, Who's your LVP? Who are you thinking about? Buffy? Buffy's good. I was thinking about Giles a little bit. Yeah, Giles and Anya. I think Anya is also. Yeah, amazing. yeah. Xander doesn't do that much. No, Xander's pretty quiet in this one. He's got a couple funny lines, but that's about it. Um, LVP. LVP. I think I'm going to go Harmony for the LVP. In this mm, one. I like that. I mean, she's. I think she's only there to fuck Joss Whedon. So. I think so, too. And I think this <laughs> is one of the most obvious cases of that. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't into it. You yeah. can go Ben, but I, I like he. I don't know. It's fine. I, I'm not gonna go Ben. I'll go Harmony. <laughs> you you too. What? Wait, I'm you, sorry. I got you, distracted by by IMDb. Are you well, going well, with Harmony also? Uh, yes. All right. So is that it about Buffy? Anything else on this episode? Yeah, let's get into Angel, huh? <laughs> 